I'm going to transition from this to a subject that's going on right now that's percolating. And I'm going to revisit it a little bit later on in the show, but I'm going to start the conversation now. And it's going to be an extreme left turn from the world of sports to the world of pop culture and entertainment. And that would be my man Shannon Sharp and his interview with comedian and Oscar award winning star Monique. Because he did a sit down with her for his club, his club Shay Shay podcast recently. Um, and to say that it was a bit similar to Cat Williams, it was in this regard. It was three hours long. Cat Williams' interview with Club Shay Shay was nearly three hours long. Not only was it three hours long, it involved a lot of ridicule, a lot of calling out. Um, and to be quite honest with you, it highlighted a lot of issues that are going on in the comedic world yet again. And some would say it's taken an extreme turn where it's so tinged with negativity, it's made folks, particularly in the black community, uncomfortable. Now, to give you an example of the kind of thing that I'm alluding to, I want you to listen right now to Monique sitting down with Shannon Sharp, and in this instance, talking about superstar comedic individual, Mr. Kevin Hart. Listen to this. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol, and we're trying to get our talk show back. Mo, whatever it is, I got you. Now, Kevin Hart is one of the biggest entertainers right now in the world, Correct. right? And was then. We got off the phone with Kevin Hart. We called in the mall immediately and said, Kevin Hart said, whatever we want to do, he got us. He's going to partner executive use. They was like, oh, this is incredible because when you put Kevin Hart name on it, you it's already know what it is. Correct. Two weeks go by. We get a call from in the mall. In the mall says, we just got a call from Kevin Hart's manager, Dave Becky. And Dave Becky said, Kevin doesn't want anything to do with Monique. So whatever she told y'all, he doesn't want to do anything with her, nothing. You know, he doesn't want any any kind of relationship with Monique. So what transpired or what do you think transpired between then that two that two week period? I called Kevin Hart immediately. I said, hey, baby, we just got off the phone with Endemol and they said Dave Becky called them up and said, you don't want anything to do with me. He said, Mo, that's that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now. I said, wait a minute. Are you OK, though, with this white man calling them up? Getting in between our relationship after something you said, he said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. Before I go any further, that wasn't the only person she talked about. She talked about Steve Harvey. She talked about Oprah Winfrey. She talked about Tyler Perry amongst others. And not only did she do that, she also spoke about Taraji B. Henson. Remember recently, Taraji B. Henson made news because she was tearful talking about being underpaid as a Hollywood star, a black female actress. And she became very emotional and very transparent in her frustration and alluded to some things in regards to Oprah and others. And Monique in the past has pounced on that opportunity. And certainly she didn't hesitate to do so here. Here is what she said, alluding to Oprah Winfrey when talking about Taraji B. Henson's and her dilemma. Take a look. So when you see our sister go through that, you see her go through and... We act like our eyes didn't see what it saw when we watched that promotion happen mm -hmm. with the color purple. Right. We wanted to act like we didn't see how Oprah Winfrey treated Taraji. In my humble opinion, when you saw her walk up, you saw that there was tension. You saw that there was something happening. Right. And then when you see Taraji write her a love letter, it's like, listen... We got to stand tall and stand strong on what we know. You, We know you were mistreated. We know it wasn't right. We know it was unfair. And then you turn around and say, oh, but Lady O handled it. I have a problem with that. Now, here's the deal. 
Before I go to break, let me say something. This is not a comfortable conversation for me. In the interest of full disclosure, Cat Williams has always been cool with me, always been a gentleman when I've met him. Steve Harvey is a friend and a brother. Kevin Hart is a friend and a brother. I don't know Cedric the Entertainer that well, but I've known him well enough. We have interviewed him several times over the years, and we are very friendly with one another. I once had the pleasure of being interviewed on Monique's show where she had her own show, Monique, on BET when I was a guest there many years ago. And I've been a longtime admirer of her work, her artistry. She is a brilliant talent, both comedically and just overall as an actress. She is spectacular. And what has happened to her or what appears to have happened to her, what she believes has happened to her, in terms of being blackballed, in terms of being pigeonholed and marginalized, it's not comfortable to hear, it's not comfortable to watch, I don't like it at all, I root for her. But the first order of business that I'm going to do before I get in to the specifics of everything that they've had to say is I'm going to say this. It's become problematic. And somebody has to say it, so I'm going to say it. It's become problematic for black people. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. We're starting to look really, really bad. And some would say, Stephen A., what the hell are you talking about? What do you mean start? We've been making ourselves look bad for quite some time. Now, for those athletes out there, former athletes, you know, because the people that tried to look at me and would sit up there and would say, Stephen A., you know, selling out, sell out, I can't stand his ass, blah, 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 blah. Bump them. They full of it. You were performing on a court or the field of play. I called you out for your performance. And that was that. That wasn't black on black crime. If you are a player and you're getting your ass kicked by somebody. Who's dropping 40 or 50 on you. And I call it out. And that person has to be happens to be black. How am I knocking down my community? Because I point out the fact that you put your talents on public display is getting your ass kicked. Uh, it's my obligation to point out that you're getting your ass kicked. And that's all that happened. That ain't selling out. That's covering sports. And you happen to be somebody who's chosen to participate in sports in a public forum who didn't live up to what people's expectations were. And we talking to somebody, I mean, it could be Kwame Brown, it could be T.O., it could be somebody. I talked sports. I didn't get in anybody's personal life, characterizing and castigating anybody. That's not selling out. That's doing my job of covering sports. It's not Monique's job to do what she's just done, what she just did. It wasn't Cat Williams' job to do what he did on Club Shay Shay weeks ago that now has over 68 million views, by the way. It wasn't their job to call out Kevin Hart and Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, Ricky Smiley. Michael Blackson, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry. It wasn't their job. That was a choice. A choice that extended far beyond the corridors of their job. That now has black America taking sides. And looking at one another with an elevated level of skepticism and disgust while having others outside of our community look at us that way as well. And that's a subject that we're going to tackle on the Stephen A. Smith show today. We're not running from this. We're going to talk about it. Whether it's Monique, it's Cat Williams, or even if it's my brother, Shannon Sharp for Club Shay Shay. I got a lot to say. 
a whole lot. It's about time that it gets addressed in a manner that it deserves. Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show right here over the digital airwaves of YouTube. As promised, um, it's time to tackle a subject that I will openly confess I'm not very comfortable tackling. Because I understand where people are coming from and I don't want to give any extra shine to whatever perspective they have on Mr. Shannon Sharp himself, but I have no choice. Now, some people would ask the question, why is that? He's a grown ass man, so are you. He's doing his thing, you're doing your thing. I will remind you that Shannon Sharp is a major, major contributor to my daytime, my daytime job, which is first take on ESPN. And to be quite honest with you, we've grown to become friends. I got a lot of love for the brother. I respect the hell out of him. He's a three-time Super Bowl champion. He's a Hall of Famer. And the reality is, is that he's doing big things. You can say what you want, but 68 million views for the Cat Williams interview is 68 million views. The first order of business with Monique in this interview in day one, with it being 5 million views. Ladies and gentlemen, that's over 73 million views. You can say whatever you want to say. You can't. You just can't take away from that reality and what Shannon Sharp has brought to the table. The flip side to that, however, is that when you do interviews of this nature, we've heard noises emanating from our community because both of us are black men. I'm from the North New York City. He's from the South. It doesn't matter. As black men, as brothers, as black people, what Dion Cole alluded to on numerous occasions in terms of negativity selling, in terms of us going after one another, what Chris Spence, Spencer alluded to when he talked about how nobody does this to one another but black people, it's inescapable. It's a reality. And so as a result of that, I have to answer questions because people have literally asked me, Stephen A., what do you think about how Shannon Sharp interviewed Cat Williams and Monique. What do you think about the pushback or lack thereof? Why give somebody the platform to come out on your show and say all the things that they said? I'd be lying if I said those were not legitimate questions. I'd also be remiss in neglecting to inform you that I personally asked Shannon Sharp to come on this podcast and discuss it. To his credit, although he's not here, he was willing to come on. He just had other commitments because he knows I'm his brother and I'm not trying to backdoor him. And I'm going to say stuff, something rather, that a lot of people are not going to like. I don't believe that Shannon Sharp is just an entertainer. I believe he's a voice. He's a voice in our community that is elevating by the day, he matters. And because he matters, with that level of significance and cachet comes a level of responsibility, some would say. But when you do it to the point where you're trying to act as if he shouldn't have them as guests, or somehow, some way, he could have curtailed or edited out what they've said, I'm not going to go that far. Shannon Sharp, is under no obligation to edit or alter genuine thoughts that his guest has on his shows. If that's how they feel, that's how they feel. Now, would I have been a little bit different? Sure, because I'm a trained journalist. And as a result, the level of pushback that I would give I'm seasoned and trained to do it spanning 30 years. When Shannon Sharp was on Club Shay Shay or Nightcap, rather, weeks ago, and he said to Chad Ochocinco during one of his telecasts, I'm not Ed Bradley, the late Ed Bradley, God rest his soul. I'm not 60 Minutes. I'm not 48 Hours. I'm an entertainer. My only retort to him was that you're not just an entertainer, you're a voice. And take that voice into consideration Whenever you do whatever it is that you do, so you're never telling somebody that you're just an entertainer. Because you're more than that. Outside of that, I have a very, very, very difficult time 
looking at the day and age that we're living in, seeing 68 million views here, 5 million views there, over 73 million views for just two interviews, and asking somebody to pr- to ignore the significance of that, knowing most people wouldn't. Because that's being full of shit. That's not being authentic. Most people wouldn't ignore that. Now, again, I would have pushed back on Cat Williams on several things because the personal in which he went about the business of highlighting his attacks and illuminating his attacks against Kevin Hart, against Steve Harvey, against Ricky Smiley, Cedric the Entertainer, Michael Blackson and others, or I would have won a receipts. I would have had to dig a little dig. I would have had to dig a little more. That's just me. That's just me. Steve Harvey's a friend. Kevin Hart's a friend. If they came on this show right now and they were talking about Cat Williams in the fashion that Cat Williams talked about them, I would have grilled them. Because when you sit in front of this microphone, in front of this camera, my belief is that in pursuit of truth, you have to be objective. Now, you can be subjective once you receive the truth about how you receive it, how you interpret it, how your perspective is, and what you disseminate to the masses. That's fair. But in pursuit of the truth, the objectivity has to come reigning through. There are people who feel like Shannon Sharp didn't do that. I respectfully disagree. I think he just did it differently the most. When Steve Harvey came on his show, They said what they wanted to say. When Cedric the Entertainer came on the show, they said what they wanted to say. When Cat Williams came on the show, he said what he wanted to say. When Monique came on the show, she said what she wanted to say. We don't know what level of veracity and truth is attached to any of their words or lack thereof, and we have to be real and and authentic in that regard. But when somebody wants me to get at Shannon Sharp, it's not happening. I'm going to support my brother. Even if I think he's wrong, I'm still going to say it, but I'm going to support him anyway. Meaning letting him know I'm always going to look out. But in this particular instance, I think the ire is being pointed in the wrong direction. So many people want to sit up there and talk about people were famous for doing this to me, coming to me and having expectations they wanted to heap on my shoulders. Why? Because guess what? Now you in this position, Stephen A. But what the hell did you do to get me here? When I was scratching and clawing and climbing my way to this position, where were you then? You didn't do anything for me then, but when I got there, all of a sudden I owe you and us something because I'm in a place you ain't. Nah, I'm not going for that. So in that regard, I'm not going to engage in condemnation. But I did feel a need and an obligation to comment because so much stuff is being said about this man that works with me two days a week on ESPN's first take. And I had to let everybody know where I stood about the man that I brought in to sit across from me two days a week. And that's where I stand with that. I'm not saying I agree with everything. I'm certainly not saying I would have done things the way that he's done it. I'm not saying that somebody would come on my platform and have three hours to say anything. I don't talk for three hours, so I damn sure ain't let nobody else talk for three hours. So we're different in that regard, but I ain't throwing no shade on Shannon because of it. I would, I would do things a little bit differently, but props to him for doing what he's doing in terms of getting the interviews. We can parse and compartmentalize and dissect everything else, but he got the interviews that people clearly wanted to see. And he may believe, let him speak, it's a conversation. And let the public judge. Me as a professional journalist throughout my career, I might think a bit differently. As it pertains to Cat Williams, God bless you. I hope that you continue to be the great comedian that you are. I hope that you were telling the truth. And I hope that somewhere along the way, there's some level of compassion. Because even if there were things done wrong or there were things done against you or things that you didn't like, I think it's safe to say, Cat Williams, that I don't know if anybody out there wanted to or had the intent to hurt you as much as you seem hell-bent on hurting and humiliating them. And that's something for you to think about because I got mad love and respect for Cat Williams. He's a hell of a talent, and I wish him nothing but the best. Monique, she's brilliant. 
She's an Oscar winner. She's sensational. What she did in Precious, her phenomenal acting career, her comedic genius. Monique, I don't know if anybody said this to you, but I'm going to say this to you, and I'm going to say it to you out of love. You always say sisters or brothers when you're talking to black people. Well, this is a brother talking to you, Monique. You look very bitter. You look like the light has been stripped from you. I don't know what happened. I'm not going to call you a liar or anything like that. I don't know. I never asked Steve Harvey or Kevin Hart or anybody or, or Tyler Perry or Oprah Winfrey and all of this other stuff. I never asked. I don't know. But I know that you're telling stories about Oprah. I'm not saying false stories. I don't know. But you're telling one thing about Oprah. You're telling another thing about Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry leaves you a voice message reportedly and you're airing the message. Well, how can somebody feel comfortable enough ever talking to you if they think that their messages are going to be disseminated to the masses when it was supposed to be a private conversation? You talked about Kevin Hart and how you were supposed, he said, I love you, sister. We'll talk in two weeks. And then after that, you never heard from him again. Okay. Did you play any role in that? I'm just asking. Did you? I don't know. But when you bring these kind of things up and you talk about Oprah, I'm quite sure Oprah ain't perfect. I'm quite sure there are an abundance of people, black, white, and beyond, that have had issues with things that Oprah has done that have negatively affected them. But we all know how much positive Oprah generated for so many of us because she showed us the way in so many ways about how to excel in this industry and in life. Does it have to be that bad? Even after all this time? It's just a question. Something that I want you to think about. Shannon Sharp had Monique and Cat Williams. I'm not looking for those interviews to interrupt his shine. He get his shine, I'll get mine. But that's my dude. And if he comes across as doing something wrong or doing something that people, people feel that I should be compelled to comment on, that's why I chose to comment. That's my position. I hope y'all can understand and respect it. And if you don't, you don't. But you know where to find me. This ain't the only Stephen A. Smith show you're going to see. I'll be back with more. That's just how I feel about it. And by the way, I don't mean bitter in a literal sense when it comes to Monique. I'm just talking about the look of it all right now. That fire that's still in your belly. I'm looking at you and I see a brilliant talent that has a whole life ahead of her that can still do great things. And to me, Monique is looking like somebody who feels like she's finished and there are people to blame for it. I don't think you're finished. I think you're great. I think you'll be back. I think you'll do great things and I can't wait to see you do them. Hell, I'm trying to produce stuff. I'd love to have Monique in it. Because that's how brilliant of an actress you are of a talent you are. So I just wanted to say that.